Well, I didn't see this one coming. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by VIPCDKDeals.com. CDK Deals is a website dedicated to getting you the best prices on games and software, and right now you can get a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for an insanely low price. Just find the best price and apply my special discount code GPC20 for an additional 30% off. You can also check out securely with PayPal, and once the payment is cleared, you should get access to the code both in your account as well as in your email. In order to activate the new copy of Windows 10, just search Activate Under Windows and type in your key. So if you want to learn more, be sure to click the link in the description below. So this week has been absolutely jam-packed with leaks when it comes to GPUs and CPUs alike. And while we have been talking about graphics cards a lot recently, what we haven't been talking about is CPUs. And guys, this week there's been a ton of new information on both the Zen 4 CPUs coming out from AMD, as well as the Raptor Lake CPUs coming out from Intel. And these next generation CPUs are looking to be mighty impressive and bringing far more performance than a lot of people were originally expecting. Specifically, let's first First, go ahead and talk about Zen 4 because there's been some absolutely incredible information that I really just wasn't expecting to hear. And this information comes from WCCF Tech and here's what they had to say about AMD's upcoming CPUs. Now according to them, we're going to be getting a launch slash announcement date on August 29th, which is less than a month away at this point. We're going to be getting reviews on September 13th and then finally there will be availability on September 15th, which is just less than a month and a half away. So that's actually some very shocking information because originally I was expecting these things to be kind of announced sometime around September with maybe availability later in September or even maybe a little bit later than that, moving into early the next month. So I'm actually very shocked and happy to see that we are going to be getting Zen 4 a little bit earlier than many people were originally expecting. In fact, the end of August, like I mentioned, that's less than a month away. So in less than a month, we're probably going to be getting all sorts of various different information on the Zen 4 CPUs, such as, you know, the maximum clock speeds as well as what type of performance we should be expecting out of these CPUs. And speaking of performance, first let's go ahead and round up what the Zen 4 CPUs are going to look like, and then we're going to take a look at yet another leak to try and nail down just how fast these CPUs are really going to be. So according to this chart over on videocards.com, it's looking like the 7950X is going to indeed be once again a 16 core 32 thread CPU for their flagship processor. Now in terms of clock speeds, it's apparently going to be able to hit around 5.5 gigahertz. Now I have seen some leaks of potentially it getting even higher than that, but we'll just have to wait and see what the final models can really achieve and we'll probably get more information on that as we get closer to the launch which is coming up real fast here guys and then finally in terms of the TDP we're talking 170 watts so the wattage is going to be going up on these parts when compared to their Zen 3 counterparts but again you're going to be getting much higher clock speeds I mean we're talking 5.5 versus 4.9 gigahertz which is a 600 megahertz gain and that is really really impressive then moving on to the Ryzen 9 7900X this is once again going to be a 12 core 24 thread process Processor, and unfortunately, there's been no information on the clock speeds, although of course it is going to be much higher. And then the TDP for this one is going to be 170 watts as well. Then we have the Ryzen 7 7700X, which is actually very, very interesting because this is once again going to be an 8-core 16-thread processor, but as opposed to what we saw with the Zen 3 processors where we got a massive price hike and they introduced a 5800X first with no 5700X until much later, it looks like we're going to be getting a 7700X basically right away. Now, whether or not we're going to be getting a 70 7800X or maybe even a 7800X 3D in the near future is yet to be determined, but you know what guys, seeing 7700X is definitely good news because to me this signals that AMD knows that they cannot charge an insane amount for these upcoming CPUs as it's going to be a fierce battle between Zen 4 and Raptor Lake CPUs, so they're definitely not going to be able to charge insane amounts of money, meaning that yes, the 7700X is likely going to come in at a fairly reasonable price, and that's just great news for gamers. And finally moving on to the Ryzen 5 7600X. This is going to be once again 6 cores and 12 threads, and it's going to have a base slash boost clock of 4.4 and 4.9 gigahertz, at least according to this leak. So there you have it. It looks like overall Zen 4 is going to be a decent improvement over their Zen 3 counterparts. However, it's starting to look like the majority of the performance is not going to be coming from massive IPC jumps. However, it is going to be coming from the extra cache as well as extra clock speeds that are going to be coming with these CPUs, and I think you're going to be seeing a similar thing out of Raptor-like as well. So I think the gaming performance 
performance uplift is going to be pretty decent, but the technical single threaded performance probably isn't going to be as great as many people were expecting. Even AMD themselves stated, you know, expect over 15%. So I wouldn't be too surprised if a lot of applications showed like 15 to 18% single threaded performance uplifts. However, in games, maybe you'll see 20% or maybe even above 20% out of the Zen 4 CPUs, which should actually put them on par or even better than the Alder Lake CPUs currently available at Intel. And then of course, if you talk about 16 cores, yeah, getting 16 cores and greater performance than Alder Lake is going to be a pretty huge deal. And I think it's going to be a great option for a lot of content creators out there. So it's getting very, very exciting, but there's a little bit more information that we have to talk about when it comes to Zen 4, because although these things are going to be really, really just lightning fast, they're also going to be supporting DDR5 for the first time. And according to a new leak that was spotted over on Twitter by 9550 Pro, it looks like there has been a leak on an MSI board showing that the DDR5 that they were running on some sort of engineering sample CPU was able to achieve 6400 megahertz at CL32. Now that in and of itself isn't necessarily super impressive, however what I did find impressive is that unless things are just a little bit too blurry here, it's looking like it's 6400 megahertz CL32, 33, 33, 96. Now 96 isn't too impressive, 32 isn't too impressive, we've seen many different kits of RAM hit, you know, 6400 megahertz CL32, but what I haven't seen is 32, 33, 33. So what this signals to me is that these CPUs are going to come with possibly some new RAM that is going to be, at least in terms of the timings, probably a lot, lot tighter, which means that this DDR5 is going to be a significant improvement over what you're seeing on the Alder Lake CPUs currently. So hopefully that's the case. And if that is the case, I do think you're going to see the DDR5 is going to start to become a lot more affordable and a lot faster. But now let's go ahead and wrap this video up by talking about Raptor Lake, because there's been a lot of leaks about Raptor Lake as well. And it's starting to look like possibly Intel might actually retain their gaming performance crown if Raptor Lake does turn out to be as good as many people are expecting. Now, AMD probably will have the multi-core performance crown, so it's going to come down to what you prefer, better gaming performance or better multi-core performance. But I do believe that Raptor Lake is still going to retain a slight lead over Zen 4 when it comes to the gaming performance, probably down to the massive increase that we're going to be seeing out of the clock speeds. And speaking of clock speeds, these leaks are getting insane, guys, because according to a new leak that I found over on videocards.com that was originally posted by QXE87, it's looking like an early engineering sample of a Raptor Lake CPU was able to achieve 6200 megahertz or at least nearly 6200 megahertz in CPU Z, which is just absolutely insane. And I've been seeing a lot of results like this. Now, the CPU in question is the 13700K, and I've been seeing many different leaks of 5.9 to 6.2 gigahertz on some qualification samples or engineering samples of some Raptor Lake CPUs. But I do want to just dispel some of this stuff right away here, guys, because if you're expecting 6.2 gigahertz out of some Raptor Lake CPUs, I'm going to give you guys some bad news. That's probably not going to be the case. Now, is it going to be possible to maybe hit 6 gigahertz on a single core? Yeah, I could possibly be seeing something like that, but much beyond 6 gigahertz is definitely starting to sound questionable. And talking about doing 6 or 6.1 or even 6.2 gigahertz on all cores is definitely not going to happen. And even if you are able to achieve 6 gigahertz on like a single core, it's only going to be for some really light loads. And in reality, this is not going to translate to gaming performance. So you're going to be much better off trying to do an all core overclock. And speaking of all core, it's looking like some of these leaks are doing all core at 6.2 gigahertz. And guys, once again, I really don't think you're going to be seeing that. Now, over a thousand points in CPU Z is absolutely impressive. That's just absolutely insane. But if we take a closer look here, you're going to see this in a lot of the various different leaks. It's running a really high voltage. I mean, we're talking 1.536 volts. So at the very least, I do expect that they're probably running, you know, chilled water or something like that. They're using some sort of exotic cooling because this simply wouldn't be possible under regular air cooling or even water cooling. 1.536 volts is absolutely insane. Just to give you guys an idea of how insane that is, I can run a 12900K with the E-Cores disabled up to 1.35 volts, but any higher than that, and I start breaking over 90 degrees Celsius in Cinebench R23. So running 1.5 volts or even higher is just going to be something that's completely unattainable by any form of cooling solution. So what can we expect to see out of the Raptor Lake CPUs? Well, I do believe in terms of the 1% lows, they are going to be pretty impressive. Now, the overall single threaded performance might be only around 10%, but again, 1% lows, I would expect 15% or even higher out of the Raptor Lake CPUs over Alder Lake, meaning that the gaming smoothness is going to be greatly improved in Raptor Lake thanks to the extra cache it's going to have on board as well as the extra clock speeds and speaking of clock speeds i would expect an all core overclock with like e cores disabled to probably land somewhere between 
5.4 and 5.6 gigahertz, which is gonna be a pretty decent improvement over the 5.1 to 5.2 that you see out of the 12900K. So yes, you are gonna be seeing much higher clock speeds, but if we're talking about, you know, six gigahertz or like seven gigahertz or something crazy like that, I wouldn't get my hopes up too high to be seeing anything too insane like that. But hey, that's just what I think. How fast do you think Zen 4 and Raptor Lake are really going to be? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.